Today we're going to talk about present perfect tense and I'm going to discuss this from the speaker or learner's perspective on how easiest or best to introduce this topic. So the goal of the live is to understand better where the difficulties of present perfect are and when to use present perfect. So I'm going to highlight the difficulties. If we know areas are difficult for everyone, then we feel a little bit better about um, you know, struggling. And then I'm going to try to point out when their uses are critical, not optional. All right, present perfect. I'm going to look at three different aspects, mainly two. I'm going to focus on the formation of the verb, which is easy in some ways and difficult in others. And then I'm going to focus on the unique use of present perfect, which involves as well the signal words. So we're going to look at two things, formation of present perfect and the unique use of it, because these are the two areas that students often struggle with, when to use it and how to form it. All right, the two difficulties of present, present perfect. The form, not the regular form, the regular verbs, but irregular past participles. Early students, you know, intermediate students, pre-intermediate struggle with learning all of the irregular tenses of the verbs, so the past and the past participle. We talked about this already with simple past, so we'll talk about that, and then when to use present perfect. This is very complicated because most of us don't have this tense in our own language. So it's very difficult to sort of understand or feel when it's appropriate. All right, let's look at the form first. Very straightforward. Have or has plus the past participle. I'm going to talk about the past participle. They're either simple because they're regular verbs or irregular, which means you have to memorize them. You have to learn them. There's no way around it. And you learn them by using them. That's the fastest way to learn irregular verbs is to use them in active communication, either speaking or writing. Those are the two forms of active communication. The more you use them in writing and speaking, the quicker you will remember them. All right, the regular of the form with regular verbs is rather straightforward. Straightforward means simple or easy, not complicated. Like, liked, liked. So regular verbs at the ed at the end. Like, liked liked. In our case, it's the second liked. But we're going to look at decide here. I decide for myself, present tense. I decided on my career, past simple. I have decided on my career. This is present perfect. So that's how to form it. Have decided. That's a regular verb. Not very complicated. Um, in terms of finding how to spell the word. Now, the irregular verbs are troublesome because there's no pattern. They're irregular. You can't guess what they're going to look like. You have to just know them, memorize them, use them, and then they become familiar, and then they become regular in your mind. All right, so... The irregular past participle, so this is where present perfect and simple past share a common difficulty. Both tenses, not past continuous, but simple past or past simple and present perfect share a same or common difficulty in, with irregular, um, past, irregular verbs. So you can see here with see, saw, and seen. Present tense is fine. I see you. Past simple is irregular. I saw you. And then we have another irregular with the present perfect. I have seen you. So with past simple and present perfect, this, the difficulty, one of the difficulties lies in how to form 
the past participle seen or the past saw. So that's a common difficulty among both tenses. All right, so that's the first difficulty. Because it's difficult, I'll give you another example. Now, drive, I drive to work every day, that's present. Now, if it were regular, I would say I drived, but it's not regular, it's irregular. I drove all day, simple past. And then here's the present perfect construction. I have driven. 300 miles today. So that is one of the difficulties that you will just have to be patient with and learn the past participle. Learn them in threes, actually. Drive, drove, driven is how we generally learn these in triplets. Now, what isn't difficult is the first part of this equation. Have and has are straightforward because you're using them anyway. I have, you have, she, he, it has finished, for example. So you have the first part's easy, regular verbs rather straightforward, irregular verbs are the difficulty. So keep that in mind as you're using present perfect. Now, the second difficulty is... I'm sorry. Okay, the second difficulty is when to use it. The use of present perfect, of course, is the difficulty. And the reason it's so difficult is that most languages don't use present perfect. I've listed five that do, five that I'm aware of. Italian, Spanish, these Romance languages, and German, and perhaps Germanic languages in general. They will use an, a near equivalent or an equivalent of present perfect in their own language. So it's easier to make, so for, for these language speakers, it's not so difficult. For everyone else, including Slavic languages, Polish, Russian, these, Ukrainian or Belarusian, any of these languages, it's, it's foreign. It's really foreign. It's a foreign language, but it's a foreign concept within a foreign language, which makes it doubly difficult. Because you don't have this sense of, in the past, you use the past. In the present, you use the present. But in English, we have something in the middle, which is present perfect. We have the past and then the recent past, which is often where we use present perfect, something that recently happened. Not always, but common, often this is the case. And you can see here that present perfect is used. If there is, if there is an implication or if it relates or somehow deals with the present. So it started in the past and is still ongoing. It's ongoing, it's still present. So you can see here in that little chart, recently, in the last few days since I arrived, these are all uses that we would use with present, uh, the present perfect. So what the English speakers do is we divide up past and recent past. And this is not a common concept in other languages, but I wanna simplify this. I don't wanna complicate it, I wanna simplify it which is why I might be criticized, but I think it will help the early learners of present perfect. So I'm only gonna talk about using present perfect when you absolutely have to, when there's no other choice, when using past simple is incorrect. So there are two instances or thereabouts when you have to use present perfect. All other options we will look at later. So the first necessary use is with this notion of how long. How long plus present perfect. How long have you been? How long um, have you traveled, etc. So how long with an unfinished event. So if someone asks about how long and it's still valid today. I have known my best friend 
for 10 years. That means 10 years ago until now, and it's still going. You have to use present perfect in English to express this. You cannot express it in any other way. I know my friend 10 years is, you can say it, but it's not correct. I have known my friend, my best friend, for 10 years, and you're still best friends. This means you're still best friends. You can't say, I knew my friend for 10 years, because it sounds like they died. Next, I another example. I have lived in London since 2018. This means I still live in London. So these ha how long with still, and it's still valid, it's still true, you have to use present perfect. This is the first necessary use. Are you ready for the second one? Here's the second one. The second necessary uses, again, simplifying this, are with signal words. With these words, you use present perfect. So, I have just arrived to London. So, why do I teach it this way? It's easier for the young learner. Look at, so you're going to have to just remember or memorize a few words. Just, yet, never, already, and associate them with present perfect. I've just arrived to London, which means I arrived this morning, last night, something like this. I have yet to arrive. I'm sorry, that is not correct. I'm sorry. I have not yet arrived. I'm sorry, I was thinking about something else. Please remove that. I have not yet arrived. So that's the present perfect, not what you see here. I have not yet arrived. I have yet to arrive is another way to express that, but not not in the present perfect. I have not yet arrived. Yet is used often with present perfect. All right. I've never been to London. Never is often associated with present perfect. I've never been to London. I have already seen, have seen. I've already seen London. So already is a fourth or a fifth clue. One, two, three, fourth clue that you have to use present perfect. There are five more that I want to make you aware of. One, two, three, four, five. So far, so far I have not visited London. That's not so common, to be honest. Till now, not so common. I have stayed at home. But recently, since, and for, you have to remember. I have recently been to London. Very common. You have to know it. I recently collocates with present perfect. I have recently been to London. I have been in London since. This is a big one, and this is the one all grammar books focus on, since and for. I have been in London since 2010, since May, since Tuesday. So since a definite time, a time. This is present perfect. I have been in London for how long? Three years. I'm still in London. And that when I use since 2010, I'm still living in London. So these words, let me just repeat. Since, for, recently, just, yet, never, already. All four of these are very common. These you collocate often with present perfect. So these are the instances I would suggest young learners practice using present perfect because these you'll almost always have to use. These seven key words, practice in sentences, and then, or yeah, seven, and then the how long, the unfinished. I have been, I have studied English for five years. I have lived in London for this long. So you can, these are the sort of key instances where you must use present perfect in English. And you can't use others very naturally. Now, 
There are other uses of present perfect. Obviously, there are others that the grammar books talk about. But what I, I wanted to do today is to introduce what I think are the singular uses of present perfect. In all other cases, you can sort of use simple past. Now, I'm not saying you should use simple past every time, but when you're learning present perfect, I would start by learning the, case, the instances when you absolutely have to use it. Because in other instances, we can use simple past, past simple. I haven't worked this month. If you're, you can also say, I didn't work this month, simple past. Now, some people would say there is a difference. I don't feel much of a difference. If somebody tells me this, both people, if two people tell me this, I don't feel a difference in time. So I'm not going to focus on this difference of present perfect until later, until we get to an advanced level, because I don't think the difference is big enough. I'm going to tell you as a student or as a teacher, uh, as a student, to use either at the moment. As a teacher, to, to start teaching these when students are more advanced and understand the basic uses very well. Next, life experience. Have you been to Paris? I've been to Paris. Were you in Paris? I was in Paris. This is simple past. So the question becomes, what's the difference? If I hear, I've been to Paris or I was in Paris, is there a difference? I don't feel a difference. There's no difference to me. <laughs> you're conveying, you're communicating the same information. So I don't want to complicate present. I'm going to suggest to you use either for the moment. Now, I will talk about the aspect of time in a minute. A result. I uh Oh, sorry. I've lost my keys or I lost my keys. So I've lost my keys. Present perfect. I lost my keys simple past. I don't feel a difference. And in fact, if they told me these, I would feel no difference in time because no one is going to tell me, Professor, I lost my keys two years ago. There's no, there's no meaning. It doesn't make sense. You would only tell me that if you recently lost your keys, but in the past, both are in the past. Now, what some people might say is that, well, you, in, with simple, with present perfect, you still have lost your keys. But to be honest, with, sim, with uh, present simple, you also probably haven't found your keys. In other words, both sentences communicate the same basic message. You lost your keys in the past and you don't know where they're at. All right, and the final use that where there's an overlap between simple past or past simple and present perfect is the recent news. Now, obviously, this is where you often use present perfect, but I'm going to give you just an example where it's, you don't have to. The new president gave a speech. The new president has given a speech. There's no difference in meaning for me when I'm reading this. And the context will tell you when, approximately when that happened. Now, I've mentioned this. Let me repeat it again. I've mentioned the use of simple past and, pa uh, and present perfect together to tell you that oftentimes we can express events in the recent past in two ways you can also use simple past. There are very few instances when you have to use present perfect. Now, when you start and when you start entering in time, like last Saturday or at two o'clock or last month, then suddenly you have to make a decision. But those become, I think, rather clear. If I gave a speech last Saturday, it has nothing to do with the present. So it's obviously simple past. You would never say, I have given a speech last Saturday. It's too far in the past. Although you can say, <laughs> I've given a speech to, in the morning. Uh, but that's an advanced concept. All right. So what I want to just reiterate is... The, the summary, you understand the conditions. So 
I want, what I've tried to do today is to help you understand the conditions when present perfect must be used. How long with an unfinished event? I have lived in London since four. And then understand also the words, I'm sorry. And then understand also the seven key popular words that you have to use or you generally use present perfect with. Since, for, already, recently, yet. These are all signal words that you help you identify present perfect. So these make it very easy then to use a complicated verb structure right away. You just need to know about seven or eight different things and you can begin to use present perfect and all other things. You can sort of relax and use simple past if you're not sure which to use. And then slowly you can learn some of the subtle differences between them. Number The second, understand the difficulties of word formation. Don't get frustrated, but know that you have to learn them. And we learn them by using them. This is the best way. And for teachers, I'm going to suggest a model where you focus on the unique aspects of present perfect that I've tried to highlight. Focus on those first because that's critical for proper communication. But not don't confuse students with all the different variants early on, when, especially if they know simple past, which probably they do, because you can always, or in many cases, use past simple in lieu of, in lieu of is a great word, and in lieu, L-I-E-U, French word, in lieu of present perfect. So don't complicate by, I, by you, introducing too many rules. Focus on the most obvious ones first. All right.